All right, this is going to be a technical talk about programming action games and action levels. Anything where there are a large number of diverse enemies or a complex move set. There aren't a lot of tutorials on this online. All the tutorials I can find are for programming in a specific ancient, archaic uh, uh, engine. So this is how you build your own that's not quite so archaic. Um, this may not be the best way to do it, but it works for me, and I find it very intuitive. So let me show you what this is. This is a game where you can shoot stuff. Pretty basic, right? Now that's an enemy I can shoot. And there'll be another one shortly, and so on and so forth. The, um, there's, there he is. So, the basic idea here is, uh, well, how do you program the level? How do you program the level, um, and how do you do things like, uh, 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 make it so that the enemies fire in specific patterns or so that the screen moves. And this is how I do it. First off, the whole thing works by the idea of this cursor playing the level like it was a song. And you see when it hits, it moves the enemy forward. Now you can't see the enemy until, it, until you do that, but the enemy is on the exact same plane that he ends up showing up on. So Basically, you program it in the mu in the viewpoint of a uh, uh, you program it from this direct on view angle in terms of where you want the enemies to pop up. So you know they pop up on your screen at exactly this place. And now each enemy is also its own little song. So if you were to hit play here and go back to the scene view, you would see that these enemies, when they get activated, play. And that's pretty straightforward, right? This is a fire command. I don't have firing turned on at the moment because it actually makes it too confusing to explain. But as you can see, this one just fires one shot right in the middle. This one fires a slew of shots. And this one fires all three shots at once. Now these shots are default ground shots, so it doesn't matter where they're located vertically. Uh, they are going to show up on the ground when they actually get fired. But where they are horizontally and how long it takes to get to them on the play menu, those do matter. And using this, you can set up arbitrarily complex uh, firing patterns. For example, I could set up something like this, and then put another one here, and another one here, and then another one here, and it'll go bang, bang, bing, bang, bang. And then I can move this. If I need more space, I can actually go ahead and move it. I can actually move it so that it only fires the last part over again, or I can move this child so that it's over here. And you can create any kind of pattern you'd like and you can even do things like make this so that it goes away once it executes once so you can have a different pattern that executes um, there are limits but frankly you you don't need to worry about them because this already gives you more capability than you'd normally have now in other kinds of situations you might want to define things like hit radiuses and so on and so forth and all of that works in the exact same way although you'd normally have widgets attached to this that you could grab and stretch. Um, I don't have that implemented at the moment. Uh, not for this engine at least. So one of the things you may have noticed is that as it executes, um, once it gets to this third guy, it just stops. And that's because each of the enemies not only gets popped to the front, but also gets uh, asked what to do next. And the first two enemies say, well, keep going, I don't affect the flow of the game. But the last enemy says, wait until all the enemies are gone before you go any further. And so that bar just stands there and waits. Now once I kill all the enemies, the bar would continue and it would hit this right arrow, which would make the screen that I'm on down here move to the right until it hits this arrow. So you'd end up panning to the right and your character would run to the right. Um, and that's how you can control motion. And if you wanted to move to the left, you would do the opposite. And of course, it just keeps going back and back and back and back. Although I've only got a little bit of a little bit programmed in for this demo example. Um, now this works really, really well if what you need to do has very easy, simple terrain. Once your terrain starts to get complicated, this can get a little too complicated to work. So this works best for a 2D game with simple terrain you can still use this same basic idea if you have more complicated situations but you might have to actually configure it so that the enemies are prefabs and what happens inside them only shows up on a prefab editor or something similar 
um, this method where you're actually editing the uh, actions directly here in the uh, script, uh, here in the scene view. This only really works if you have a 2D side scroller of some kind. So it would work if you had, uh, you know, a, a, a shoot 'em up. It would work if you had a beat 'em up. It works if you have a fighting game. Um, but it wouldn't work if you had, say, a free roaming RPG or something. Then that that this situation wouldn't work. But this method allows you to quickly create whatever enemies you'd like and in whatever patterns you'd like. So here I just created another clone of that enemy. And uh, that's how easy it is. So this is the method I use when I am trying to build an engine for, you know, a prototype for testing all this sort of stuff. Um, it may not be the best, but it's the only thing I could come up with that didn't suck. Uh, so this is how I recommend doing it. Well, if you've got a 3D editor like I do, at least.